Thank you for joining us today on Binary Jazz, where we are talking about 3D printing and why this object that I'm holding in my hand that you listeners cannot see is not a Palm Pilot. Uh, I am here with uh, Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet. Uh, also, Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet. And I am Jazz Sequence on the internet. My name is Chris. Welcome, how's your day? <laughs> that is my answer my answer was that twenty twenty answer right there. That is <laughs> that is the every day, all day, that sigh. Yep. Can you can Kill you it. hear the rain coming through? The tropical storm that is No. Oh us? Tropical Storm Xavier or whatever? Like I think it's Sally. We're we're already like through the alphabet in, in <laughs> yeah. the beginning of September. This is the one that hit uh, somewhere in the Gulf Coast a few days ago. Oh, what an asshole I am. I don't even know where it hit. It's crazy. Not living on the coast, I don't pay attention to tropical storms anymore, <laughs> which is probably which is... a huge chunk of your brain that's just free to think about other things. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't think we about unleashed? tropical storms either. <laughs> I like I only mean, use that June... space to think about <laughs> Between June and October 31st, like we kept, like, you know, go bags and water and that kind of stuff. Candy, flashlights, uh, a lot of canned food, you know, just in case. And so every time a storm would pop up, like, you know, you just kind of watch the track and it's kind of in the back of your mind, like, what's the percentage that I need to worry about this? And a lot of times it was like zero. Uh, but but now it's like literally zero because I didn't even know we were going to be getting this until my dad was like, you're, gonna, you're in for a lot of rain in the next couple of days. I'm like, yeah, that's weird. I saw that too. I'm not sure why. He's like, the storm? Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now, now rain has simply just rained you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now that we have the sump in the basement, like I'm not, is the sump in the basement and the cap on the, uh, the chimney? Like, it's fine. Whatever. Let it rain. <laughs> Let it rain. Um, I mean, like I was gonna stop it before, like that, like <laughs> before. Whatever. Yeah, you would have to stop to this. Yeah, but, we uh, don't, we don't, we don't pay attention to uh, <laughs> to tropical storms because we're too far away from the tropics. Um, but we do pay attention to the West Coast fires because we yeah. get to breathe all the smoke. Yeah, how is it by you? Um. So we had a really like ridiculously large windstorm last week, uh, knocked out the power, downed like, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of, of these huge, like mature hundred year old trees. Um, and that had the consequence of blowing a lot of the smoke out of town for a couple of days, um, but it's back. It's definitely coming back. Um, we had a, like, um, couple days of clean air we went so we we had that that happened on i think monday night and in, and tuesday morning and a little bit on wednesday and then we went camping on thursday um to the extent that um aaron's sister still didn't have power wednesday night when they were trying to determine whether or not they were going to go because they didn't want to leave the refrigerator full of stuff just yeah leave town <laughs> right um so uh so yeah so the last day we were there which was sunday night monday morning um we started seeing this the smoke again and that was way up um in the northeastern that little that little chip out of out of utah's top corner we were up we were up by there that little that little that little notch um <laughs> yeah the chip yeah uh, so we were up by there, and we were, and we started seeing the smoke come in, and we were up high in high elevation too, above where a lot of the smoke would be. So it's, it's, yeah, we we definitely got it. Um, we definitely get it. It's. We usually have, um, we usually have like decent air 
uh, in the summer months as compared to the winter months because we in winter we get the, the cold inversion which holds all the crappy polluted air in um, so at least in the summer it can kind of you know fly away and then there's like storms or wind or you know rain occasionally uh, but but yeah now but then we have to deal with you know California and and the entire state being on fire and that seems to be an annual thing now so <sighs> What, what is going on with the world? <laughs> what? <laughs> the theme I mean, of 2020. I mean, there's a lot of things going on with the world. Would you like me to list them for you, Gary? Um, I. Is global I warming I is like, one of them. I got my ballot yesterday, though, which I'm very excited about because it's like very early on time-ish. So wow. that's great. <laughs> So I will be voting this week and sending it off. <laughs> yeah. In order for it to get back in time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I've I mean, also contemplated just biking over to the consulate and delivering it there and being like, you definitely have to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am uh, registered to vote in North Carolina. Pretty excited. I I checked to make sure because we all, you always hear the stories of of people yeah. like like finding out they're not registered to vote at the last minute so i actually checked to make sure that we were registered but i got one of those stupid emails from i don't know some progressive <laughs> oh my gosh email newsletter thing that i happen to be subscribed to for some reason uh that said like here click on this button and we'll check to see if you're registered and i clicked on the button and said you're not registered i'm like what the fuck so i went to the utah voter registration site and um i had to type in like christopher but I'm registered. I'm registered um, as Christopher, Christopher Scott. I got one of those, you know, like you get like the, the text banking is like the thing this year, or maybe it was, I don't know, whatever, two years ago, sometime. Um, I got one that said, hey, Rhonda, are you, uh, can Joe Biden count on your vote? And I'm like, this isn't Rhonda. <laughs> and so they replied, you know, like asking, are you eligible to vote in the US and blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah. And they, so they asked the same question. Get your bike. I replied, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> and uh, I just want nice you to know my person. name. <laughs> I well, I mean, I wasn't sure if it was, hey, you know, like I'm not sure how it my number got it. So whatever. Um, and so then I asked, like, is there a preferred way to vote? Like, is early voting better? Is vote by mail better? Uh, day of? Like, and they uh, they couldn't provide any guidance there. No, no, they're just they're just jockeys with a, a phone list to. Yeah, and that's fine. Them. I mean, I just and that's cool. Like, I I just wasn't sure if there was like a, a preferred way to do it because, you know. It but doesn't. I don't, think, I, I don't think they're also. I don't think they're allowed to recommend like when you vote. Mm. That it's only that you vote. Yeah. Oh. Utah's Utah's vote by mail only, and we have been for a couple of years, so we don't have really a choice i mean you can still i mean you can still vote in person and you can also deliver your ballot in person but like they everybody gets a ballot in the mail i would um i think i would like to deliver mine like but ronda's like we should vote early so i do uh, it feel here. it's not to like middle of october before we can vote early anyway so. i do feel slightly better about putting my mail-in ballot in an official like vote collection drop box as opposed to just yeah. dropping it in the mail um, yeah and i think that's what i did uh last time we had a major i'm election. not a fan of vote by mail because um oh i love it not counted several times by, by yeah mail. well that's yeah florida <laughs> <laughs> to be fair it wasn't gonna count anyway so okay <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Florida has had that problem specifically. Uh, Florida has a history of weird, stupid voting problems. Yeah, it is because it is such a political position in every county. And so it's just whack-a-mole. You get one county fixed and the next county pops up and it's a disaster. It's, God bless that state. <laughs> I ran into the issue of, I was double checking to make sure I was registered to vote because I was just like, again, hearing all the things. I was like, mm -hmm. well, let me just double check. I've lived in the same place for like 10 or 12 years now, but let's just make sure everything's aligned for, especially since I'm absentee to like 
get everything on time. And their whole process, because it's like based on the last state you lived in. So I'm in California. Mm -hmm. But then to check online, they require that you have a California driver's license number. And I'm like, I I gave up my, like, I swapped licenses like a long time ago at this point. Um, so then I was just like, so then I emailed them and I was like, Hey, I can't check using your online database to see if I'm registered because of this. Like, what's my alternative? Like, how do I, and they just sent me back this like form letter and they were like, you're going to have to call your representative. And I was just like, Oh my God, <laughs> don't you understand that all of this is long distance? <laughs> like, I just, I what, just want to talk. Was it, I mean, and obviously you got your ballot anyway, so you were, yeah. um, I guess it would be based on your old driver's license because your driver's license number doesn't change really. Well, that was what I was, and I was like trying to find paperwork with my old driver's license number on it. And then I was like, where would I have written that down? Like, I was just like, okay, like maybe insurance would have it. Like, you don't have like a, I have a, we have a, (laughs) we have a paper bag that has all of our important documents in it. Um, yes a literal paper grocery bag and i think the idea uh originally was we should put all this stuff somewhere yeah. and this is all like really important stuff so it shouldn't be in something that looks valuable like if our house is broken into that's like, a, that's a strategy we don't, we that's don't a strategy. want we don't want them to get all that stuff like it's like in something that looks like it's worth something we want to put it all in like something shitty that looks like it's worth nothing that they can just ignore so Uh, funny though because then my thinking is is like so you put it in the most flammable thing (laughs) (laughs) and we want to preserve it um, so we squirt lighter fluid on it like once a month just to really let it saturate but there's no right though it's all strategy (laughs) but but uh um, but the paper bag has like an, multiple old IDs of, for both of us. Um, I think it's got I think it's got my old California license, which probably has a picture of me from high school. Yeah, um, yeah. I was actually they like literally took my license from me and gave me my new one, so nice. I couldn't. Keep yeah. It. Okay. Okay. <laughs> which I was I I said to the lady I was like oh I was like is there any way you could just like like cut a corner. Or something and then I could keep it because I was just like because 16 year old me worked really hard for this driver's <laughs> license <laughs> yeah. and I was just like there was just something about the California license that I was like I worked really hard for this <laughs> when oh, we well. moved I had like I had my backpack with my laptop in it and uh, my passport and my birth certificate and like checkbooks like pretty much anything of value was in this backpack and I started thinking through it going like that's a lot of like consolidated risk mm-hmm. in that bag like if i misplace that thing like nope not closing on the house not <laughs> everything is effed up yeah we got we got birth certificates for the kids and for us in there we've got marriage license we've got old ids so passports time. were in there but they are no longer in there um my i mean because like i've actually been using mine uh mm-hmm. and and then since we were gonna you know maybe go to Canada on a trip and maybe go to France on a trip. They were like out, um, like ready to go, but that, that happened. <laughs> back when we made travel plans. Back, back when travel was a thing. Speaking of travel, out of Salt Lake City has a brand new airport. Really? Yes. We oh. just opened our brand new airport. Um, they actually were able to speed up the construction because of COVID, because no one was there. Well, that's a silver lining. There were no those pesky planes trying to land at yeah. the time. So. <laughs> I, it it wow. just seems it seems really ironic that it that it opens like it opened like last week, and it's like wow, there's a four million dollar airport that nobody is in. It was way more than four million. It's probably it, it might have been four billion. I don't know. It was four yeah. something. A lot. Yeah. Four and an alien. An alien. Yeah. Some, some sort of alien. I'm just going to start saying alien and drop the first letter. <laughs> aliens and aliens. It's a bigger number aliens. than I'll ever like be able to comprehend. It's fine. Dream big. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have a topic today? We what do. do. About Chris's airport. <laughs> the topic is yes, airport. airport. <laughs> the Christopher Reynolds Memorial Salt Lake City Airport. <laughs> Yeah, if you were going to name an airport, what would you name it? Would you name it after yourself or would you name no. it after someone that you think is great? I would not name it after myself. That's I mean, the answer to both those is yes, me. 
fucking yeah. great. <laughs> okay, well then who like who do you think is underappreciated and needs an airport? Oh, that's, uh, that's a good question. Malcolm X. Um, the Malcolm X Airport in Salt Lake City. <laughs> in Salt Lake City. Okay, Salt Lake be, the City perfect, be the perfect place to have the Malcolm X Airport. And then the airport code could be something. The just... be MX. Yeah. <laughs> like screw is that Mexico. Mexico City? Yes, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say screw Mexico. Screw just, Mexico. Like, take the code MX, away. Malcolm X. MXO. Mm. MXO. Um I would pick oh, I can't remember her name. The first if you can't remember their name, Russian then it's an astronaut. Because it would course. just be weird to have a Russian astronaut as the name <laughs> for an airport in the US. What's yeah. I mean, what was the name of the astronaut where they planted all the trees? You know what I'm talking about? This is big. In Never space. mind. <laughs> I'll like post an article or something. I, I have to Google this now because <laughs> the astronaut nice. that planted all the trees? Uh, <laughs> Valentina Tereshkova. Tereshkova International Airport. Okay. <laughs> the Malcolm X Airport would just be X. Yeah, X just... International Airport. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to do a topic today or do we want to just fly fancy free? We should do a topic. Okay. okay. I mean, we, we, we're going to fly fancy free anyway. Yeah, uh, I know. It's a... <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> All right, all right. Um, <laughs> the topic today is miasma. Miasma. That's uh, M I A S M A. Yeah, that's okay. like uh, that's, okay. Go, Gary. Have we done this topic before, or yeah. am I just having like the biggest deja vu? Oh, maybe we have. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think we have. I have. I have our. No, we have not. Okay. <laughs> Because there have been all sorts of jokes. Oh, boy. I've definitely had this discussion with someone. Because the obvious, like, your asthma. <laughs> my asthma. What the hell is it, though? Oh. Are you going to, are you going to, do you have a thing? Because I. No, go. I, I, I have to go. Because <laughs> isn't it like, uh, a, like a liquidy collection of, like, stuff? Like, like a miasma of goo? Or a miasma of like like lava or something. I can't believe I can't pull this up. I had this conversation with my sister-in-law in Rhonda, um, and that's why it's deja vu. It's not deja vu. It actually happened. You're on the right track. You're definitely like, yeah. You've got the usage down, and you're like almost there. Do you want me to just tell you? <laughs> I want Gary to to struggle a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, before i struggle a little bit more this, this podcast can more. be retitled gary's struggle <laughs> <laughs> um what is so as part of my weird spiritual research i guess okay um, yeah into into the acoustic brotherhood yeah yeah definitely part of it um and some really wacky YouTube videos that I may or may not ever share um, about <laughs> the physics and the energy and the primordial wave and primordial suit. That. Uh huh. No, no, not suit. Prior, um, primordial like this, miasma. This this like energy that that connects all things and that it's just just below the surface, but we're all somewhat in tune to it. We just can't put a finger on it, right? Um, there's like a lot of positivity in that, which, which sounds super rad. Um, but then there's like those things that you experience where you're like, you're totally 90 degrees to, to that energy. You're not surfing the wave, you're fighting the wave. Maybe that's 180 degrees. I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's, it, it's all bullshit anyway. Um, but so in those situations, like I can't, I can't figure out what's happening in those situations, right? Like, is that a thing where, like, as I'm struggling to remember, like, this conversation and pull from my, my memory, like, what this was, is that struggle, like, what is that energy vibe? Like, 
like if I were to just relax and go with it, like would it resolve itself or, or is it gone forever? Or like, I can't, I can't, I, I, I can totally understand and equate like the good vibes and, and like pleasantness, but like the negative and the shit, like what, where is that in this ever resonating wave that doesn't exist until observed? I don't know if I follow. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good answer. <laughs> that's a fine answer. But I think, well, like, if I'm understanding, I mean, like, it would depend on then what school of thought you want to combat it with, right? I, it might, yeah. Yeah, it might. Because, like, you could choose, like, a Buddhist thought, like, frame yeah. of reference and just be, like, pain and suffering. Like, I, I feel like you could... Not that angle to come at it, yeah. Yeah, like um, not to treat it like a buffet, but like you could <laughs> hypothetically. One thing, I, one thing that Erin always says and believes is like her sort of part of her uh, way of explaining the universe is that you you get what you what you get from the universe at large is relative to what you put into it. Uh, so if you put out a lot of positive energy then you'll get back positive things. Uh, if you put out a lot of negative energy, then you're going to get a lot of negative things and you're going to be focusing on the negative things. Um, yeah. So the yeah, idea yeah. is, yeah. Um, and it's and sort, so, of, sort of karma, but not quite the same thing, but kind of related. Yeah. So I feel like the, that, like the, the obvious uh, and probably like immature, spiritually immature question that stems from that is like, well, what about things like cancer or, you know, mm -hmm. like these things that happen that are, that are, that are inherently, awful. inherently uh, bad. Yeah. Or, or flip it the other way and say like, yeah, okay. So if karma is a thing, how come Trump? Right. Like, cause that dude's a cosmically fucked. Right. I mean, that's so Please write a biography uh, but, with that. <laughs> cosmic, cosmically fucked. <laughs> by Gary Kovar. <laughs> <laughs> but see, mine wouldn't be about that because I don't, I feel, I feel, I almost posted this the other night, uh, Tuesday, uh, yeah, Tuesday night. Like, like, I don't remember where I ran across it. It's somewhere in the piles of crap I've been reading. Um, somebody posited the idea like, maybe the universe is like just slightly skewed in your favor. Right? Like, all right. Like that doesn't necessarily mean it's not skewed in everybody's favor, but that idea, like, you know, on Tuesday night when like Ron and I were talking about like things that we had accomplished during the day that uh, was an awful lot that, you know, were just big mountains we wanted to take care of like, wow. And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, cause everything's like skewed towards us like a little bit. So yeah. Why wouldn't it, why wouldn't it be great like that? obviously it's fantastic um which also perhaps is a very spiritually immature concept i don't know um no, i mean it doesn't like i i there's a um i'm gonna tie this back into something that's completely not related to spiritual metaphysical stuff uh yeah and there's a a really good ted talk that probably i imagine one or both of you may have already seen which is basically um this person uh talking about um uh the power of positive thinking and but also like fake it till you make it like fake positive energy until you actually have that and the the, re right, right. the reason for that is because when you come at things from that uh headspace you make better things happen for yourself um, because you are more confident, you're more outgoing, you're more comfortable with the situation. And so because of that, you're able to see these things and make these connections and do things that you wouldn't be able to do if you were like closed off and focused on negative and just like really um, in, in a bad headspace. Um, and so the idea is like, if you can fake being happy and positive, then eventually you're not faking it anymore. It's actually, you know how you feel about uh yeah. about things um oh i very much buy into the entire thing until you make it yeah i mean that's i said that constantly <laughs> when i was doing the e-commerce thing like to everybody they'd be like i don't know i'd be like well fake it take the data you have in front of you make the best decision 
you know, you know more about this than anybody. So what if you're wrong? What if you're and right? That, that sort of aligns like, with the, the idea that, that the universe is skewed in your favor. Because if you believe that the universe is skewed in your favor, it doesn't matter if it actually is. It's like a placebo. Right. It doesn't matter if it actually is. If you believe that it is, then it kind of becomes that way. And that aligns into sort of my metal, just general metaphysical concept of the universe, which is that the things that we collectively uh, believe or believe individually, we make true. So like, like my, uh, I had this theory for a long time and I don't know if I still like believe it, but sometimes I do, but sometimes I don't like one of those things had this theory that like God didn't come first. We came first and then we created God by believing that there was something greater than ourselves. And we all tell these stories in all different cultures. And most of those stories are pretty much the same story. So because we're all telling the same story that made the thing there. And now there's a thing and maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Maybe it's non-existent. Who knows? But there's a thing there that we put our energy into and so therefore it exists because we think that it does and it's sort of we shape that existence of whatever that thing is yeah there's this yes so there's uh there's this uh i don't know what you call him there's this guy peter rollins who's like a heretic theologian i don't know just think like my like, just, guy. <laughs> guy, he's he is all over the place and so like he, one of the things he talks about is like He's like, there's this like weird fallacy that like uh, atheism and theism like are opposed to each other. He's like, they're telling the same story. Mm. Like they're talking about the topics the same. It's just, yeah. you know, you're just looking at different sides of the same story. He's like, I find that stuff really boring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, and so then he talks about like from the theist perspective, like the creation of God, like the, the different levels of creations of God. Like I had to create a God because I had to explain my existence, right? Um, but how powerful can God be if God couldn't be created until I could think of a God, mm. right? So that's not really, that's not really interesting. And so he goes through all these steps uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating stuff. Um, he also does this thing called atheism for Lent, which, so some background, like in the, if you're not versed, like in the, in Christianity, season of Lent is a time typically where you fast, right? And so the concept is maybe for fasting, like give up faith entirely. So like, <laughs> Your, your fasting is not from something simple like chocolate or meat or alcohol or, um, or even food, but your fasting is like completely from the concept that there is uh, anything. And so do that for 40 days. And, uh, and I'm like, I don't know, man, like that's, that's some punk rock approach to theology that I <laughs> like. Like, if we're serious about this, then let's, like, not half-ass it, and let's really, like, dig in and experiment and see. And that's that's exciting. And maybe it is, like, maybe it is just that first-level theism that, like, we God had to exist because we needed to create something that created us. Like, that's that's it. But but I don't know, man. If the universe is really slanted in my favor, as I believe it is, there is something underneath the surface that, like, long before it was like defined as specific religions there was this like mystic understanding mm -hmm. of the world and mysticism has something going on that spiritualness that and spiritual like i feel like that even that word has some like baggage yeah there's so, weird there's weird content i use it because i haven't found a better one yet but yeah there's something there's stuff there there's energy there's light there's there's i'm glad we didn't let like let, let this not get weird <laughs> I'm glad we got weird. <laughs> I threatened it. <laughs> I'm glad we got there. Uh, yeah, what's miasma? <laughs> since, since we've talked about a miasma of topics. We did we talk well, about we might we well have, talk but about I, what I think that is. Allison's going to say what it is and be like, oh, it was right there in the tip of my brain. I lost my tab. Mm. It's a feeling um, of melancholy. <laughs> well, you're not completely wrong. Um, it's, <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's used currently as like a highly unpleasant smell or like an oppressive okay. or unpleasant atmosphere which surrounds or emanates from yeah, something. You're so you're there's like through a miasma. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like a source to this. Um, okay. It kind of it stems back from like 
miasma theory, which is like what was the precursor to germ theory, basically, was that oh, red. in medieval times they were thinking that there was like that it moved through the air, the stench, this thing. And yeah. that's what was like with the plague and like not the plague, uh Black Death. Maybe that's the same thing. I'm sure. Yeah, Black Plague, um, yeah. And uh basically like moving through the air is like a cloud that was emanating. Yeah, so I think I think what always gets me on that word is is that it sounds like plasma or mm -hmm. and magma. And so like I combine the two things and it's like it's a weird liquid that's just a combination of stuff that's melting, but it's not. But, but I it's always kind of it's 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 like that, but in like air form yeah. because like you can it's definitely COVID. picture a cartoon version yeah of like whatever it is like filling a room or whatever that's a word that we'll need to use in dungeons and dragons <laughs> mm. and like it got replaced by germ theory so you know process it's all iteration <laughs> do we have any allison questions we do we do uh there's also we also got an email uh from the genrenator slap app, slack app support but there's no content so that's cool um is there a form for that uh, apparently there is and somebody found it and clicked it but they didn't put anything in it um so <coughs> thank you all for waiting for me to sneeze because that was <laughs> really <you>. valuable <laughs> valuable content right there um, actually in my family we don't say bless you we say whiskey whiskey, whiskey. okay <laughs> Okay. Um, well, speaking of whiskey, uh, Allison, question number one is how many types of whisks can you name? I feel like this is a trick <laughs> question uh, because a whisk is the kind of whisk that I can name. There's <laughs> like seven. A, maybe maybe, maybe uh, for a secondary whisk, uh, a fork is another type of whisk that I can name. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Like, if I don't have a whisk, then I've got a fork and I can do the same thing. That Those are the types of whisks that I can name. Gary? Uh, Gary's trying to think of something clever. Yeah. Because he no, also doesn't I, know any types of whisks. I think that egg whisk is a specific kind of whisk. But maybe that's only because that's all we use it for. So it's like maybe <laughs> the egg whisk. I don't know. I think there's only, I think I can only think of the one kind. Yeah. Just the whisk. And I think we only own one, maybe some different sizes. <laughs> Just, yeah. I mean, we have a big one and a small one, and I, they're both whisks. They're There's two right the there. The small the large one. and the yeah. small one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Small, medium. And fork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just curious. I just so there are se There's seven kinds? Uh, there's like 11, maybe more. Wow. I don't know. What's um, the flat one? You know what I'm talking? Is that like an actual kind of whisk? Or is I that think it's just called like a flat some, whisk. Like, as seen on TV stuff. Okay. As seen on TV. There's I don't like, actually know if it's like an ISC on TV product, product but it seems balloon, like in our flat think, pack and ship world, but that's the kind of thing you'd want to sell because it doesn't you have to you know, incur the size dimensions of the first class. I know, I know there's balloon, there's a French whisk, and then a flat whisk. Those were the ones that I knew. But then there's and like... a the French whisk, obviously is identifiable by the beret. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the mustache. Yeah. <laughs> French and whisks always come with a baguette. Every once in a while you use it and you go, oh. <laughs> and the sound effects. Um, it's weird. There's not any battery powered. It just I'm sorry to my sister-in-law if she ever listens to this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Allison question number two is, is cheesecake pie or cake? Cake. And again, I mean, this is this is like a trick question because cake is in the name. Yeah, of course it's cake. How could it not be cake? It's cake. I don't know what I. I was in my twenties, like I had a birthday, and someone's like, "What kind of cake do you want for your birthday?" And I said cheese. They're like, "Really?" I'm like, "Oh, hell yes, yes, absolutely." <laughs> like of the cakes that I eat, that's my favorite. How do you define a cake then? I mean, the same way I would define a salad. It's pretty nebulous and. <laughs> Well, no, because to me, a cake is something that you mix a bunch of ingredients in and bake. And a yeah. cheesecake has that element to it, but it also has crust and filling. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, this is one where I feel like, like we need to define, like, is a cake 
part of the pie family or is a pie <laughs> what's the relationship like pies and cakes like are they are they they're different are they taxonomies Gary. parallel are they parallel <laughs> or not like like what maybe maybe but like what's the defining characteristic like if i it's mean a, they're if it's in dessert, the baked goods family they're like they're in they're like in the baked but we just uh, yeah branch. okay yeah um but I mean, yes, cheesecake is is an anomaly, anomalous cake, but it is a cake because it is called a cake. <laughs> uh, that is the I only reason why fair. it's a cake. Because if it was not called a cheesecake, it would be a cheese pie, probably, um, because it's it's almost like a like 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 a key lime pie sort of thing, except with a denser material. Like it's probably the denseness, the density of, of this of the cheesecake material that makes it a cake as opposed to a pie. So you have I mean, like a what's, cake. A, what's a flan? <laughs> like is a flan a cake? Is a flan a pie? Flan is a, a custard. <sighs> you get out your you get out your your baked goods density tool and you check <laughs> the density to see if it falls on the cake. Chart. Yeah, Cross and there's like right in the middle, it's close. You know, <laughs> some of these like lighter cheesecakes could could fall into that pie category. Sadly, or maybe they why custards. sadly maybe just because they're light. I think for custards you have to pull out your. Um, what would you need? What would, what would be like similar something to that custard? measures movement? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like how does it the jiggle factor? The <laughs> jiggle factor. I don't know. Because <laughs> cake Desert just doesn't earthquake. have much movement to it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.